So now we're going to work on some simple factoring. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with these that we've already talked about because a lot of times what happens is you'll find these mixed in to the other ones that we're going to be doing today. So the first one here, this is a difference of squares. It's a difference of squares because you have a square here, a square here, and it's a difference between them. And the pattern for that is just to do the square root of 9 and the square root of 4 and one's a plus and one's a minus. That's how you do it. You just know the pattern. You recognize you have two squares, a difference of squares, you write out the answer. The next one here is a perfect square because I have a 4x squared on this end and a 25 on this end. So I know they're squared. I know this is a 2x. I know this is a 5. And I know this is a minus in the middle. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about ones that don't look like this. So if I look at this one here, p squared plus 2p minus 80, well, it's definitely not a difference of squares because it's a trinomial. It's definitely not a perfect square because although p squared is a perfect square, 80 is not. So I have to do this a different way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the negative 80 on the end. So what you do is you take 80, you write it down like this, and we want to find all the factors of 80. So a lot of times what people will do is just start randomly throwing numbers out. They'll say, well, 4 does, 20 does, 8 does. But when you do things like that, you end up leaving factors out, and then you get stuck later. So what you're going to do is do this systematically. You're going to put 1 and 80. And you always start with 1 in the number because 1 goes into everything. And then you start counting up. So what comes after 1 is 2. Does 2 go into 80? Yes, it does. 2 goes in 40 times. Does 3 go into 80? Nope. Does 4 go into 80? Yes, 20 times. Does 5 go into 80? Yeah, it does. And a lot of times I'll ask people, okay, 5 goes into 80. You know 5 goes into 80 because it ends with a 0. But then I'll say how many times and then they're stuck. So if you want, you can always use a calculator when you do this. But I know that 5 goes into 80 16 times. 6 doesn't go into 80. 7 doesn't go into 80. 8 goes into 80. 10 times. 9 doesn't. And the next number is 10, which I already have. So what happens is when you do it this way, you have all the factors, and they're all in order. 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 10, 16, 20, 40, 80. So when you start, when you keep counting up, and you realize that you're over on this side now, that means that you've got them all. And if you do it this way, you will never forget a single factor, and you'll have everything you need. So after I have my list, what I have to do is I have to find a pair of these that is going to add to my two. So... Um, I can do that by adding or subtracting. So like, you know, for example, 80 plus 1 is 81. 80 minus 1 is 79. Well, I don't want 81 or 79. I want a 2. So if I look at this list here, um, I can see the 8 and the 10. 8 and 10 are 2 apart. So what I have to do is I have to add these or subtract to make a 2. And the way that that'll work is um, I could use a positive 10 and a minus 8. So what I'm going to do is do p minus 8 and p plus 10. And a lot of times what happens is people know which pair it is, but they don't know which one's positive and which one's negative. And there's a little bit of a pattern I'll talk about in a second that you can do. Um, but what you want to do is check it. So you can always take this and put it on here and make sure that whatever you came up with works. So p times p is p squared, this is minus 8p, this is 10p, and this is negative 80. So there's my p squared, these two here add to the 2p, and then my minus 80, so I know this one works. So the next one, I have 32 on the end, so I'm going to do a 32, I have 1 and 32, 2 and 16, 3 doesn't work, 4 works with 8, 5 doesn't work, 6 doesn't work, 7 doesn't work, and then I'm at 8. So this, this is everything I have. So I have to look at which pair is going to make me a 12, and I can see the 4 and the 8 can add to a 12. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my two binomials. They both have an x in it. That's where I get the x squared from. And then I put a 4 in one, and I put an 8 in the other. And like I said, they're both positive because they both add to 12. And you could check it if you want, but that's what the answer is going to be. The next one here is 35, so I write down 35, I start with 1 and 35, 2 doesn't work, 3 doesn't work, 4 doesn't work, 5 works with 7, 
and then 6 doesn't work, and then I'm at 7, so I know that this is really it for 35. So hopefully you realize this is what we're drawn to here. So I have to take the 5 and the 7 and make a negative 12. So that means that they're both negative. So I have v minus 5 times v minus 7. This last one here. Now you might notice that this is actually a perfect square. But a lot of times what happens is, is once people start doing these other ones, they forget to look for this pattern. And that's fine, because actually what we were doing will work on those the same. It's just you end up doing more work than you need to. So if you spot it's a perfect square, and you can just write the pattern out, it's faster, but otherwise this will work. Now my end number is 1, and the only factors of 1 are 1 and 1. So this is clearly a plus 1 and a plus 1 to give me a 2. So this is x plus 1 times x plus 1, which means the same thing as x plus 1 squared. If you wrote it like this or you wrote it like this, it really doesn't matter. Um, but that's it. That's all there is to it. So you come up with the factors, you find a pair that adds to the middle number, and then you write your binomials out. So that's how you do simple factoring.